Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this video, we discuss one of the more difficult roller alignment challenges, rollers that pivot. This video builds on what we learned about translating rollers in Module 12A, so it would be best to see that video first. The most common pivoting roller is a dancer. Winders may also be pivoted in part, such as some nip rollers, or in entirety, such as the turret winder. The challenge is already high for any roller alignment because most will need to be precise to about the thickness of a human hair. How close rollers need to be aligned and how to achieve that alignment in a general case are well enough described in the literature. To these challenges, we add more in the case of rollers that move. These include how to check the alignment of rollers that are not bolted to frames, the even greater risk of clearance maintenance problems, and compliance design problems, and finally, how to time the two ends together consistently through the stroke. The audience will recognize these challenges from the last video, but we will add to this list shortly. As before, we need to decide which part of the stroke is most critical. In the case of the dancer, it is usually mid-stroke. In the case of the winder, it is when the wound roll is small. As before, we need to check alignment in this most critical location and do so off the stops. So how do you set up for checking alignment without using stops? In the case of dancers and pivoting lay-on rolls, you can support the roller precisely at its center. As before, we check alignment at both ends of the stroke as well as mid-stroke. Now is when things get a bit different for translating and pivoting rollers. With pivoting rollers, what is most important is the pivot itself. Unfortunately, it may not be easy or even possible to directly check alignment of the pivot because there might not be a place on the pivot upon which to put a target. In that case, we might have to infer pivot alignment by looking at the surface of the roller at the ends of the stroke. To this, we add another possible complication, and that is the possibility that the two arms are slightly different lengths. Finally, of course, we have the very real possibility of clearance and compliance of the system. As before, we check clearance and compliance by fixing one end and flexing the other with a load appropriate for the application. The total movement by wiggling one end should be less than our tolerances for misalignment. Many arm pivot connection designs do not hold. These include set screws that let loose and keyways that get loose. A more sturdy connection would be taper locks or welding which would never let loose. However, with a weld you would then need to be able to adjust the level and square at the other end of the arm where the roller attaches. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical series. If you want more information on roller alignment, you can search the Roysom Library Abbott app and see dozens of articles on the subject. Also, you can learn more from Modules 4, 72, and 73 of my Web 101 course.